So Natalie Cole is going to sing with her father. What they did was they got the original arrangements of the Nat King Cole session. They transferred Nat King Cole's vocal track onto a track on the 24 track, and they re-recorded all the music to his vocal. They mixed all that. They put the orchestra on one track of the dat and Nat King Cole's voice on another track of the dat, and then another dat that had the orchestra on it and click. What they wanted was Nat King Cole's voice on one track of the dat and click on the other track. They were going to put the dat in the dat machine and the engineer in the live nightclub, wherever it is, plays the click tempo and Nat King Cole's voice to the conductor and the conductor's got four, five, six, seven, eight, da, and everybody's in and they're playing along, da da dum da da ding to the click because it's rubato in the front, da 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 and then Nat King Cole comes in and sings the part and then Natalie sings it live on the mic and the mix is all there between the tape and Natalie's live voice, right? Okay, so they send these two dat tapes to have someone put the click on. Well, they gave it to an engineer and obviously I could see that the engineer wasn't a musician or might have been a musician but never actually sat in front of a conductor because none of the clicks really fell on the downbeat. And that's what had to be done. You know, it's got to be three, four, da, da, da. it's got to be on the downbeat so the conductor can conduct. Otherwise, Nat King Cole, when the voice comes in, is going to be in a different part of the song. You know what I mean? So it's all got to fit to when his voice comes in 20 measures down the road or, you know. So they called me, Mike, you got to come. We got this job. I said, okay, I'm coming in. So I go in the studio and I got the dat with the orchestra and Nat. And then I got the dat with Nat and Click. And I transferred them both into Pro Tools and then lined up both tapes in Pro Tools. So I had four tracks now. Everything lined up. And as I was doing all this, I could tell what happened. The engineer got the click machine that's got the variable tempo on. He just listened to it and varied the tempo as it went by. There is no way he was going to hit the downbeat. Because the beginning part was like, uh, da, dee, 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 da, 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 dee, da, you know, all not straight tempo. And then when he comes in, when I fall in love, Da, da, da. And then there was a tempo, right? And then the ending went into another rubato section, and it actually ended up, I, I put it in 6-8 times so we could get every, every little nuance, you know. But now that I could hear where the downbeat was, because I've sat in front of a conductor, what I had to do was I took each click and made an individual region out of it so I could move each click around. And then I moved the click to right where the downbeat was. And then it's there. Wherever that downbeat was that I knew where it was, put that click there by hand, each one. Boom. And it flew. I said, Ange. Because Angel was recording back then. How did they record Nat's voice? I can hear the orchestra in the background. Didn't they overdub? He said, no, we didn't overdub then, Mike. We put Nat in the middle of the orchestra. In the late 50s, they had three-track tape recorders. They would have effects on one track, dialogue on another track, and music on another track. And then they would blend those three tracks together to the picture. That was the end of the tracks. There were not four or eight track machines, because the multi-tracks were basically built for film. They would record orchestra by putting two mics on the orchestra and one mic on the vocal. And they did not have the ability to overdub at the time. They would record the three tracks live. What they used to do is build this whole orchestra and then they'd get baffles like that and make a box in the middle of the orchestra in front of the conductor so the conductor could see the vocalist, the vocalist could see the conductor, the whole orchestra could see the conductor. And they had a microphone in that box, that was track three, and the other two microphones to catch the orchestra. And that's the way all that Nat King Cole stuff was recorded. Listen to those mixes. They sound great. What that means is that engineer mixed that live right then and there while it was happening. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's easier to record 24 track or to record the two track? When you're going straight to two track, folks, your mix is over when the song is over. <laughs> that means that anything you did during that time is registered on that doggone tape 
If you have the opportunity to let them play it again, give me another chance, maybe it will. But if it's a live date and you're mixing live, or if it's like these things were recorded where they got the orchestra set up and they're going to downbeat at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they want to be recording by 10 minutes after 8, so the engineer would have to get the mix in 10 minutes, the full orchestra, with Nat's voice, boom, they're going straight to mono. It was mono back then. There was no stereo. That's a tough job. That means you better know what, who's getting the limiter now, who's, what's the setting, all the set, my reverb, who's getting the reverb, patch everything, that this one gets that, that's that. All these patches are done. This is the EQ I want, the bass. This is what I'm, everything done. You've got 10 minutes to actually make a blend. It's a very hard job, and I've, I've seen him do it. I've watched him do it a hundred times. I've done it in a small way myself. 